ever wanted to build your very own chatbot from scratch, but weren't quite sure where to start? In part two of this series, we're gonna go through exactly how to build your very own chatbot using React.js and Reader. Now we're gonna be covering a lot of stuff in this tutorial, but specifically, we're gonna be covering three key things. So first up, we're going to be covering how to create a React.js app that allows us to showcase a chatbot. Two, we're gonna be connecting that React.js to our Express backend that we built in part one of this tutorial. And last but not least, we're gonna improve our usability and the look and feel of this chatbot using CSS and some dynamic scrolling. Let's get to it. In part one of this series, we went through building an entire backend API using Node.js and Express to handle our Watson Assistant API calls. Now in this part, we're gonna be going through how to create our front end. Now, because we're going to be working with React, the first thing that we're going to do is create a React app. Now we can do that by running the command npx create react app. And we're going to store all of our React components, specifically all of our front end components inside of a folder called client. So we just type in client and hit run. So this is going to create a new folder within our application and you should see it pop up here. So you can see that that's done successfully. Once that's done, we're going to install all of our dependencies. Five minutes later. All right, so that's done. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to install our dependencies. So there's a couple that we need to install. Now we can do that using the npm i command. And the first one that we're going to install is Axios. So that's going to allow us to make requests to our backend API. Then we also want to install Redux. This is going to help us working with our state or our application state. We're going to install Redux, dev tools, extension. That's going to allow us to more easily see our application state using the Chrome extension. And then we're also going to install Redux Thunk and React Redux. So these are just two additional libraries that help us work with Redux when we're building React apps. And we'll hit enter. A little longer than a few minutes later. Okay, so we can test out whether or not our React app is running successfully. So we can just CD into our client folder. And then from here, we can start our React app by just running npm start. Now, all things going well, our React app should start on port 3000 and we should get a template React app showing up. And you can see our React app has run successfully. Now, at the moment, our React app is just running by itself. So we don't actually have our backend running. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to make a few changes to our package.json file in our backend API so that we can have both our front end and our back end running at the same time. So we're just going to stop our React server by pressing Command C, and then we're going to step back into our back end API folder, so into our React chat folder, and we're gonna make a few changes here. So the first thing that we're going to install is a library called concurrently as a dev dependency. So this is going to allow us to, ah, looks like it's already installed. So because we've already got concurrently installed, we're going to be able to use that particular library to run both our backend and our front end at the same time. Now, what we do need to do, however, is make a few changes to our scripts up here. So at the moment, we've just got start and we've got server. We're going to add two additional ones. So one to run our client from here and one to run both of them at the same time. So the first one that we're going to set up is our client. So we can do that by just adding in a new script. And in this case, our client is going to be run using npm start as per usual, but we can access our client by using the prefix flag and typing in client. So that should allow us to run our client. So if we try that, You can see that we're running our React app. Now, if we cancel that, we're going to set up another script to allow us to run both of these at the same time. So if we add in another script, let's call this one dev, and we're going to use the concurrently command and then escape out of that. Then we're going to use npm run server. 
this is going to run this particular server command here. So that's going to run Nodemon so that we've got hot refreshing installed. And then let's escape out of that. And we're also going to run npm run client. Perfect, so this command is going to run the server and the client at the same time. So this command and this script. Now we can test that out by just running npm run dev. Yep, we need to save. And all things going well, we should have our React app running. So that looks like it's all well and good. You can see that it's fully refreshed. And then we can go back over to the API calls that we had before and test those out as well. So remember we had two API routes. We had the one for our sessions and we also had the one for our specific messages. So if we run the one for our sessions, you can see that we've got a session ID. We can take that over, paste it back into here. And you can see that both of our API and our React front end are running successfully. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is clean up our React app. So whenever we set up a new React app using the create React app command, there's a lot of extra stuff that comes pre pre-packaged or pre-installed. So we're going to strip that back to really the, the essential components that we need for this particular application that we're going to be building. So let's uh, stop our servers and step into our client folder. Now within our client folder, there's nothing there that we really need to remove, but within source, there's a bunch of stuff that we can potentially take out. Now, the first thing that we're going to delete is our setup test file. We don't need that for now. We also don't need our server worker or service worker.js file. We can remove that as well. We can remove this logo file we step into index.js, there's a bunch of stuff we, from here we can remove as well. So we're going to remove our index.css file, our service worker import, and last but not least, this bit of code here, and save that. We're also going to delete our index.css file, our app.test.js file, and from our app.js file, we're going to remove our logo import. We're going to leave our app.css file. And then within this particular section here, we're going to remove everything but our main div. And we're just going to add in hello world there just to make sure it runs successfully when we do rerun it. And from our app.css file, we're going to take all that out. So I'm going to replace that with some custom CSS later on. So now what we want to do is we want to make sure that our app still runs now that we've removed all of those components. So let's try that to npm run dev. So our app's still running, we've stripped out a bunch of stuff. Now we can get onto the good bit and start building up our app. The first thing that we're going to do is set up our folder structure. So there's going to be three additional folders that we add to our source folder. And this is going to contain all of the stuff that we need for our front end chatbot app. So the first folder that we're going to create is one called reducers and let's create a folder there. Reducers basically tell us how to update our application state or the data within our application. So all of those are going to be within there. Then we're also going to have a folder for our actions and actions are really our triggers and they can be triggered from our front end and basically they go off and do something. And then last but not least, we're going to have our components. So our components are really just the parts or the building blocks for our front end app. So it might be a chatbot window. In our case, we're going to have a bunch of stuff within our chat component. We're going to have our chatbot history. We're going to have our input box and maybe some headings or we'll, we'll see when we get there. So let's create our components folder. Perfect. Now, before we go any further, we should probably lay out exactly what it is that we're going to be doing. Now, there's a bunch of stuff, but let's write down a small to-do list and we'll go through that. So we'll call it to-do.txt. So the first thing that we're going to get done is we'll set up Redux. 
So this is basically going to help us manage our application state. Then we'll also set up our reducers and our actions. So again, our actions are really triggers that are initiated from our front end and then our action will make a call to our reducer and our reducer will basically determine how to update our application state. Then the third thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up our front end. So basically how our user interacts with our chat application. Now that we've done that, we're probably going to need to display the messages to the user. We should also, what else are we gonna to need to do? So we're, as part of our chat, we're also gonna set up a chat queue. And our queue is gonna serve as basically a repository of all the different components to our chat. So it's going to store our user chat components, but also the responses that we get back from our chatbot. So basically all then we need to do is really just display our chat queue to our front end user. So we're gonna display our message. We're also, so we haven't actually dealt with our backend API yet. So remember there's two parts of our backend API. We need to get a session ID and then we need to make a call to the API to actually get that information or send our user message. So we're going to need to get and handle session IDs. Then we'll also need to handle sending our user's message to the API. Then we're also going to need, so if we've already added our user's um, our user's message to the queue, we're also gonna need to handle uh, adding our bot's message to the queue. So let's add that. Bot responses to the queue. And last but not least, we should probably do a little bit of formatting. Because right now we've stripped out all our CSS, so it's going to look a little bit bland, but we can probably, in, or we not probably, we can improve that really, really easily just by adding a bit of CSS. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is step into our app.js file and start laying this out. So our app.js file is going to be our main application file. And from here, we're going to basically import all of our components and potentially trigger some of our actions. So it's good practice to add in a bit of documentation. So I'm going to do that. So up here, we're importing our dependencies. So we're importing React and our CSS. We also need to import our Redux components. Uh, eventually, we're also going to import our chat component. And we also need to connect application to uh, Redux. So right now, Redux isn't actually hooked up. Obviously, we haven't set it up but we're going to eventually do that. Uh, right inside of this div, we've only got hello world. So once we set up our chat component, we're going to wanna to put our chat component inside that. So let's just make a comment there. So we remember to do that as well. Insert chat component here. And while we're at it, so this is not ES6 syntax, so let's just change this, make it a little bit cleaner. So const app equals perfect. All right, so we've reformatted that. That's all looking good. We can save our app. Let's just make sure it still works. Perfect, no issues as of yet. Now what we're going to do is start setting up Redux. So Redux has this concept of a store and basically our entire application state is managed through this store. So you only need to do this once and then we're not really gonna revisit this particular section again. So let's create our store. So store.js and there's a few bits to this. So the first thing that we're going to do is import our dependencies. We'll also connect the application to Redux DevTools. So that's going to just make it a whole lot easier later on when we're working in Chrome. There's an extension that basically allows you to see the application state at any time, makes it a whole lot easier. 
We're also going to set up our initial state, uh, import the middleware that we need. So that's where Thunk comes in. It just helps build action creators. We're also going to finally set up our store and export it so that we can use it everywhere we need it. All right, so the dependencies that we're going to import. So there's a couple that we're going to install, but don't fret, again, you're only doing this once. So in this case, we're going to import create store and apply middleware from Redux. Then we're going to import thunk from Redux thunk. And we're going to import combine reduces from reduces. So combined reducers isn't actually defined yet, but eventually we're going to declare that inside of our reducers index.js file. It's basically going to take all of our reducers and put them into one state that we can manage. Cool. So then we're going to connect our app to Redux dev tool. So we're going to import that dependency as well. Perfect. We'll set up our initial state. So in this case, our initial state is just going to be a blank object. And let's import our middleware. For this, we're gonna use Thunk. So Thunk just helps us build action creators and then we'll set up our store. Now, to our create store function, we need to import a bunch of stuff or just pass through a bunch of parameters. Let's just delete this, sorry, we don't need that. Uh, we're going to pass through our reducers. So in this case, this is our combined set of reducers. Let's change the name for that, combined reducers. Uh, then we're also going to pass through our initial state. And then we're going to use the compose with dev tools function and pass through our middleware. And last but not least, we're going to export that store. Perfect, that's looking all good for now. All right, then the next thing that we're going to do is set up an index.js file within our reducers. And here we're going to import, again, we're gonna import our dependencies. We're going to import our reducers. We're only gonna have one in this case, but if you wanted to extend this later on, it's going to make your life a whole bunch easier. And then we're going to export those. Cool, so we're going to import our dependencies here. So from here, we're going to import our combined reducers function from Redux. So again, this is going to allow us to condense all of our reducers together and pass it through as one component to our store. So we're going to import that. And we're going to import that from Redux. For now, we're gonna leave it blank and we're going to export it. And we actually need to go back into our store and change this from combined reducers to combined reducers. That's better. All right, so that's done. Now what we're going to do is actually hook this up to our app. So in this case, we're going to import our Redux component. So here we're going to import provider. And our provider sort of acts like a wrapper around our application that allows us to hook into our store. And we're going to import that from React. Redux. We're also going to import our store, which we defined in store.js. We have an error there. Nope. So we're going to import store from store. And then, as I said, we're going to wrap our entire application inside that provider. So if we go to within our return function, we're going to wrap it there and we just need to pass through our store. Perfect, now all things holding equal, we should be able to check out whether or not our application state has initialized. 
Oh, we do have an error there. Let's just go back. Now we can check our application state. So if we refresh, now, now we can check our application state. So if we scroll over, huh. okay, it looks like we've got a bit of an error there. And, oh, we haven't applied our middleware. So if we go back into this function here and just type in apply middleware. Let's check that out. Perfect. All right, cool. So our app's running. It looks like we've got our state running. So it looks like our state is there. We're all good. Cool. So the next thing that we're going to start doing is let's actually tick this off our list. So we've set up Redux. So that's done. Now, before we set up our reducers and actions, let's actually set up our chat. So let's move that up. So this is just going to be a lightweight chat component to begin with, and then we're going to fill it out. So let's do that. So inside of our components folder, we're just going to create a new folder and we're going to call it chat. And then within that folder, we're going to create a new file. And again, we're going to call that chat. So now we're going to create a React component. So we've got shortcuts inside of VS Code, so we can just type in RAFC with an E, and we've automatically got a lightweight component built up. Now what we want to do is we just want to start adding a few components to this or a few bits of uh, text to this, and we'll test it out within our front end app. So again, we'll type in uh, this is a chat component. Perfect, and then what we can do is take this same component and bring it into our main app. So remember how we had this placeholder here to import our chat component? Let's do that now. So we can use the import chat, or we'll write, not import. So we're going to write import chat from our component. So we add in a dot and then we're going to grab it from components slash chat and slash chat again. Then what we can do is bring in our chat component here. Let's test it out. Okay, cool. So you can see that our chat component is now rendering in our application. Good start, we're starting to get there. So let's go back and let's start fleshing this out now. So rather than just having a line that says this is a chat component, we can start building up our application. So if we go back to chat.js, let's actually start laying this out as we would in a real app or for our app. So there's a bunch of components that we're going to, or that's going to comprise our main front end. So let's delete that. The first thing is let's create a bit of a container. So in this case, let's call it um, class name equals chat. And then what we're going to do is create a, let's create a header. So H1 chatty, we'll call it chatty, the chat bot. Then we need to handle our messages. We'll do that in a sec. And we're going to just import a dummy placeholder message here. And we're also going to create an input, so an input box. So we need somewhere for our users to actually type in information, right? So we're going to just create an input. We'll give that an ID of chat box. And I think that's it for now. Let's test that out. Let's see what that looks like. Alrighty, cool. Uh, we can probably remove that hello world. So let's go back to this app and remove that, save that again. Alrighty, cool. So we've got the beginnings of our chatbot here. So we can type in stuff, nothing's really happening, but we're gonna fix that in a second. So we've got the beginnings of our full chatbot application. So let's scroll back to our chat now and let's start fleshing this out. So at the moment, we're not really doing too much with our messages. So we wanna start handling our user messages. 
So in order to do that, we're going to use the react use state uh, lifecycle function. So this is going to be allow us to temporarily hold our message. So we'll call bring in use state. And then what do we need to do? So we should probably create a state function. So we'll go. So we're going to create a variable that allows us to hold our user's message. So in this case, we'll call it uh, message and then we'll create a function that allows us to update that message and we'll call that set message. And then we'll call the use state function. So now what we can do is we're automatically going to have a variable that allows us to access the user's message. Now, what we actually want to do is be able to grab that value. So we can do that by updating our input component here. All right, so before we do that, so let's add some comments. So handle users message. And then we're going to start handling that down here. So what we want to do is we want to update our message variable every time the user changes the information within that input box. So we can do that using the onChange method. So every time the message within our input box changes, we're going to update our message variable. Okay, so every time there's an event, we want to basically set our message to, so we can grab the value from our input box using e.target dot value and effectively what that should allow us to do is grab our message now right now we don't really have any way to visualize that so let's create another function that allows us to see that value as soon as the user hits enter so this function is going to be enabled on key press And let's create a fair, uh, let's create a function that handles that. So we'll call it uh, handle click. And we need to close this over here. Remove that. Awesome. Cool. All right. Let's, so let's uh, so function that handles user submission. And this is going to be called a uh, handle click. And we're going to make this async because eventually this is going to be the same function that submits our user's message to our API. So we want to be able to handle that. Cool. Now what we want to do is we want to check or we only really want the, the function to execute and do stuff if the users hit enter. Now what we can do is we can check whether or not the users hit enter based on the code that's coming from the key press or the key down. Uh, the code that we're looking for is code 13. So we can actually grab that out. So we can grab, let's just create a variable called code, e.key code or e.which. Now what we wanna do is if the code is equal to 13, then let's just log out our message. So remember our message is stored within this message variable here. So in this particular case, if our user hits enter, then we should see our message logged to the console. So let's just double check that. And then what we also wanna do is we wanna set our message to nothing. So we wanna clear the message if they've hit it. So we'll go set message equals blank. So remember this, this function here allows us to update our temporary message. So if they hit enter, what should happen is our user's message gets logged to the console and then the message goes back to nothing. Actually, we need to change this over here as well. So we want our user's message to be dynamically set. And we can do that by setting the value equal to our temporary message variable. Perfect, so let's hit save there. Doesn't look like we've got any compile issues. So if we go back here, let's go to our console. Now, if we type in a message and hit enter, you can see our message is successfully logged to our console. So that seems to be working fine. And now what we need to do is be able to display those messages. Cool, so let's go back. 
just check our to-do list. So it looks like we've set up our chat. So let's say that's done. Jump back over to our chat app. Now what we wanna do is start setting up our actions and reducers. So effectively, we're going to be adding our user's message to a message queue. So let's get that done. So if you cast your mind back to the first part of when we were setting up our application folders, we had three key folders. So we had reducers, components, and actions. Now, if you think of your actions as your application triggers, so every time your user clicks a button, you effectively go and trigger off an action. That action then goes and updates or sends a message to our reducers and tells us how to update our application state. Now, what we wanna do is have some, effectively some status flags that tell us whether or not our actions were successful or not. So what we're gonna do is we're going to set those up and we're gonna call them types. So if we have different types of action results, we're going to be able to display those within our Redux dev tool. So we'll actually be able to see whether or not our actions are successful or not. So let's head on over to our actions and create a file called types. And within our types, the first type that we're gonna create are the types that allow us to handle adding our user actions to our message queue. So in this case, we're going to call it, um, we'll just call it input success. This type is going to be called if our user action is successful. So in this case, we're going to just call it input success. It's gonna be the same as this. And let's create another one for if this fails. So we're going to say input underscore fail. Perfect. Now, what we wanna do is create some actions. So we're gonna create a new file here and we're going to call it watson.js. And within here, we're actually going to store all of our different types of action. So what we're going to do is we're going to import our types then we're going to have a function that adds the user message to the queue. Actually, it just handles the user message. Our reducer is actually gonna add it to the queue. Handles the user's message. And while we're at it, let's just create some notes. So we're also going to eventually have an action that creates a session. So this is going to be an API call to the back end. And we're also going to have another action that uh, triggers, uh, it doesn't trigger, it sends the message to the bot. Again, that's going to be an API call. Alrighty, so first up, importing our type. So we can import input success and input fail from types. Cool. Now we need to create our action. So in this case, our action is just going to be called uh, user message. So let's export that. And then we are going to make it an asynchronous function and we're going to dispatch it out to our reducer. And so what we wanna do is we wanna have a try catch block. And if we receive that message, we're just going to dispatch Our type, which is going to be input success, and our payload, which is going to be our user's message. Then if there's an error, we just wanna dispatch the type input fail. All right, cool. Now that we've defined that function, what we wanna do is define how it updates our application state. So this is where we need to define our reducer. So let's get on and do that. So for our reducer, we're just going to also create a file called watson.js. And again, we are going to 
import our types and then we're basically going to have a huge switch statement uh, that tells us how to update state and we're also going to set our initial state in here as well Cool. So the types that we want uh, right now, we just want our input success, input fail. Input fail from our actions types. And then we're going to set our initial state. So in this case, we're going to, this is where we're going to define our message queue really. So our initial state is going to equal messages. And we're just going to declare a blank array at the moment. Then what we want to do is basically define a big switch statement that defines how we respond to our different types. So here we're going to export that. And to that we're going to pass our state, which is our initial state, and our action. Now, depending on what happens, we want to do different things depending on what action types we get back. So let's export or let's extract those. So to begin with, we're going to get our type and we're going to get our payload. So if you cast your mind back, we had our type and our payload. We'll extract that out so we can work with it a little bit easier. And that's all going to come from our action. Then what we're going to want to do is get our messages. So because we're going to consistently update our messages, so let's grab our messages from our state. And then we're going to create a switch. Now our switch is basically going to define what we do depending on the action status or action type that we get back. So our first switch is going to be if we have a case of input success. So all things holding equal, if we're successful, what we want to do is we want to get our messages. We're going to grab our existing message payload and we're going to add in our new message, which is going to come from our payload. And we want to set a type of message. So in this case, it's going to be a user message. So if we get our input or if we get an action type, which is input success, then we're basically saying that we've successfully submitted a user message to the queue. So we're gonna add that message to our queue. And then we're going to return our state. Uh, if there's a fail, then we're just going to return our state. Perfect, so that looks fine right now. Now what we want to be able to do is trigger this particular action over here, which is our user message, if our user hits enter. So let's go and do that. So what we're going to do is go into our chat component and we're going to imp first up import our action. So what we need to do is grab our action So we're going to import user message yep. from actions Watson. And we also need to hook this up to Redux. So right now we haven't actually connected it. So we can do that by importing connect from React Redux. Perfect. Cool. All right, then if we want to connect up our component, we just need to export default and then connect. And we are going to need to map our state to props. Define this in a second and we're going to pass through our user message function. And that's hooked up. So what we want to do is we want to be able to pass our current Redux state into our chat component as a prop. So once it's, at, once it's passed through as a prop, we can now start working with it inside of our chat component. So we can do that. Let's define that function there. So we're going to pass through the current state. 
and we are going to return our props. So props are going to call chat and then we're going to access our state Watson messages. So this is effectively going to allow us to access our message queue inside of our chat component. We then want to pass through our, that particular prop. So we're grabbing our chat prop and we're also going to pass through our user message. So this is going to allow us to call our user message function every time a user submits or hits enter. Now, right now we need to call that function. So we're going to call user message and pass through the message that we've accessed. All right, that looks good. Uh, hold on, message module not found, actions Watson. Let's check that. We need to go out two folders, so Watson. All right, let's just do a quick scan before we go and try that again. So if we go into our types, uh, hold on, we need to export those. If we go to our actions, so we're exporting that, we're importing that, that's fine. Chat, we already did that. So we're now combining our reducers. That's fine, loaded there. Okay, we're importing our action types. Initial state is fine. Uh, we actually need to have a default state here as well. Cool, all right, let's try that now. So what should effectively happen is if we hit our message or load our message, that's console logged there as well. But now because we've got Redux DevTools installed, I'll drop a link in the comments below, but because Redux DevTools allows us to visualize our state a lot more easily, we can actually see each and every time one of our actions is triggered. So you can see here that we're receiving our action type, which is input success. And if we go to our state, we can actually see our user message. And in this case, we actually sent message and the type user, but that's at least displaying there. If we wanted to say hello world, we can see that loaded there as well now. So we're successfully loading our user messages to the queue. So let's jump back over to our to-do list and we can say that we've set up some reducers and actions and we've set up our chat queue. Now what we need to do is display some of these messages to the user. So right now we're only sort of seeing them in the state and we're seeing them in when we're console logging them, but we actually wanna be able to display those to the user. That's pretty easy because we've set up Redux so we can actually display that to the user by accessing that state. So if we go back to our chat application, what we want, now wanna do is loop through each of the messages within our message queue and display those to the user. So we're gonna replace this div here. Uh, actually, we're gonna keep, and yeah, no, we're gonna replace that div. So let's remove this. And what we're going to do is we're going to first check if we have any messages in our queue. If we've got no messages in our queue, then we're gonna use a ternary operator here. So we wanna display nothing if we've got nothing in our queue. And if we do have stuff in our queue, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through it and display that. So we can use the map function there or the map method. So chat.map. And then for each message, we are going to return a div. So we're going to return a div and we're going to set the class name. This, we'll use this for CSS later as message.type. So this is really going to either be user or bot. So right now it's user because we've only got users, user messages in our queue, but eventually we're going to have bots as well. And we actually want to display our message. So we can access that using, or by accessing the message property. And we'll close our div. And how does that look? So we've got, so we're checking whether or not we've got any messages in our chat queue. If we do, then we're gonna display that. 
Cool. All right, so you can see that that original sort of template string that we had is gone. So now if we type in hello world, perfect. And you can see that that's displaying. So if we wanted to add in a bunch more, this is Nick, hi, hello, yo, perfect. Cool, so our messages are successfully submitting to our queue and we're now successfully displaying them on the screen as well. So let's take that off our to-do list and set those to done. So we're on the final stretch now. We've got really, what is it, four things left to do. So we need to handle our session IDs, handle getting our messages from our bot and adding those to the queue and then just a bunch of formatting. So let's start setting up and getting our session IDs. Again, first thing that we're going to do is set up some new types. So let's do them for both uh, the session ID and the, the chatbot response. So we're going to type in export const. So we're gonna need four states here. And the first is going to be, what are we gonna call these? So we're going to call these session success. session, there was a few too many S's in there, session fail, and we'll have a message success. And message fail. Cool, then we're going to import those into our actions. So let's bring them all in. And we'll bring in the message ones as well while we're at it. Perfect, cool. Now what we're gonna do is create a function that allows us to get and create a session. So this is where Axios is going to come in. So we're going to need to import Axios to help us create an, a call to our backend API. So before we do that though, we need to step over to our package file and set up a proxy. So our proxy is basically going to state that if we get a request to our app and we don't actually have a route for it, then it's going to by default go to our backend API. So we can just type in proxy and we are going to go to uh, what is it, HTTP, local host 5000, because that's where our API is. Then if we go back into our actions, we're going to import Axios. And we're going to import Axios from Axios. Cool, and then we're going to make our API call. So in this case, we're going to create a function called create session so that we can create our session. And we're going to make this asynchronous as well. Dispatch the call. And then again, we're gonna have a try catch block. And then we are going to make a call to our API. So we're gonna store our response in a variable called res, and then we'll make a call to our backend. So we're gonna call axios.get. And then remember, this is just coming from Postman. So we're really just going to be calling this. Now, because we've got the proxy, we don't actually need to specify HTTP. By default, it's going to go to API Watson uh, by default, it's going to go to uh, localhost 5000 and then whatever session or whatever route we tell it to go to. So here we are going to type in uh, slash API slash Watson and then slash session. Perfect. And then we want to return that if it's successful. 
So we'll go into dispatch and our type. So assuming our, we've successfully got a session token, we are going to dispatch the type session success. And we're gonna send back our response. So our payload is going to equal the data from our response. And if we've got an error, we're going to send back an error. And that's going to be type equals session fail. So let's save this. Now what we're going to do is handle our reducers. So let's go to our reducers. And so right now we've just got input success and input fail. So let's import our types first up. Uh, what is it? Session success and session fail. And then let's set up some cases for that. And what we're going to do, if our if we've successfully got a token, what we want to do is store that token inside of local storage. So that's just going to make it easier for us to check if there's a valid session token available. So we can do that using local storage dot set item, and we're just going to call it session. And uh, the value is going to be the session ID from our response. And then what we want to do is just return our state back. And if we have any errors, we're just going to say it. Um, we're just going to return state for now. Perfect, but right now we don't actually have anything to create a session. So we should probably create a session initially when our application loads. So we're going to put this inside of our app.js file. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go to our app.js file and let's import a bunch of stuff. So remember we need to bring in our action. So let's do that. going to import create session from our actions and we're going to do this every time we refresh our app so we're going to use the use effect function for this so what we're going to do is use use effect for this so we'll call use effect and Let's think this logic through. So first up, we wanna check if there's a session already. And if not, then create a session. All right, so we're going to go if local storage dot session doesn't exist, then create a session. So we are going to call store dot dispatch dot sorry store dot so we're going to call store dot dispatch create session perfect and then so our life is a little bit easier we're going to store this as an axios default so that's going to mean that we don't need to grab that session id each time we make an api call to our backend so let's import axios And what we can do is we can check if local storage, so whether or not there's a session. So we're checking if there is a session. Then what we wanna do is set our Axios default. So, so we're just going to store that session within a header.
perfect. And if there's none, then we're going to remove it. So delete. So let's review that. That looks fine for now. Let's save it. No errors. So let's refresh our app now. And we can see that we've got a session token successfully called. So that's now going to allow us to make API calls to our backend. So let's tag that off our to-do list. So we're successfully getting our session IDs. Now what we need to do is send the user's message to our backend API. So we've managed to get a session token. Now what we need to do is actually go and send off our message to our backend API. So let's again step back into our actions and let's create this last function now. So we're going to export it and we'll call it send message. Again, we'll tr have a try catch block. And now what we want to do is grab the user's message. And let's create a request. So we're going to have our user's message stored within the body. And then we'll create a request. And so this request is going to go off to our message API. So let's do that. And include a body there. That looks fine. And assuming that's successful, what we want to do just to begin with is console log that out. And if there's an error, then actually we should dispatch something as well. We won't attach any data just yet. Let's check out what our response looks like. All right, so that looks fine. Let's update our reducer. Uh, let's not do anything just yet. Let's test out our response. So let's just return back state for now. And we want to call that function, or that action, every time our user submits our message through the chat. So let's bring that in as well. So we need to import our function there, add it to our Redux connection, and then we are also going to pass it through as a prop. Perfect, then we should be able to trigger it here. And let's quickly review. So we're bringing our message up here. We've got it connected down there. We're passing it through as a prop and we're calling it after the user message. Let's just go to app. So we're bringing our Axios library. We're creating the action here, calling it down there. Let's just clear That'll just make sure if there's anything stored previously that's gone. Okay. 
Let's test that out. Cool, all right, so let's refresh this. So if we check Redux, uh, state, All right, so we've successfully got a session. So now if we type in a message, so that's successfully written the message, so no errors there yet. So that's working fine. We've got a message success status. So if we check our console, we can see that, remember we're logging out our output from our API call, and we can see that we've got our data got our entities, generic. And so this is actually our response here. So it's sitting in data, output, generic, zero, and text. So rather than grabbing that whole response, we can just send that back uh, from our action. So let's do that and let's add it to the queue as well because right now we don't actually have it added to this message queue. So let's do that. So to add it to our message queue, we're just going to go back into our actions and rather than returning nothing here, we're actually going to remove that and we're going to go payload. So that's going to equal res.data.output.generic zero and text. Cool, and then we just need to make sure we update our reducer as well. So in message success, we want to return our messages. So let's extract our existing messages. And then we wanna add a new one. So that's going to be message going to equal, we're just going to grab the text from the payload and remember we're going to specify our type as bot in this case. And then we want to return messages as well. Perfect, that looks fine for now. All right, cool, let's check our state. So we've got our no messages because we haven't submitted one. So if we do that now, all right, so we had input success, we had message success, and because of the way that we set up our queue, we're already displaying our bot messages. That's the, so that's the crux of our application done. Now, what we can do is apply a little bit of CSS to make this look a whole lot better. So we're going to change a few class names. So this one, inside of our app.js file, we're going to rename our main div container and save that. And then within our chat component, we're going to rename a few additional divs as well. So the first div we're going to name chat, that's fine. Then we're going to store everything within our chat history inside of another div. And we're going to call that a history container. And throw that here. And we're also going to, uh, we'll come back to that next bit. So we'll take a look. That's looking fine. We've got our input ID, that's chat box. All right, so we'll save that. Now, I've already prepared a bunch of CSS, so we're not gonna go through this from scratch. Uh, I'll make this available in the GitHub library. We can just paste in our CSS. And already our chatbot is looking way better. So if we start typing in a message now, we get a response from our bot. So if we wanted to order ice cream, we get a response for what flavor. So let's say chocolate. How much do we want to order? 500 mils. And then we can also handle context as well. Perfect. So we can see that our chatbot's all fully functional and working. Now there is one last formatting change that we can input to make this a whole lot better. So if we start adding in lots more messages, you can see that it sort of gets lost. We can implement a function that easily allows us to automatically scroll down to the bottom of our chat so that we're always seeing the last couple of messages. So we can do that if we just go back into our chat component and we're gonna import a few additional things. So inside of React, we're also going to import use effect and use ref. 
then if we create a reference, so we'll call create a variable for that. And what we'll do is we'll create a function that scrolls to the bottom. And then what we want to do is make sure that we've got a reference to that particular div. So if we add in that, and we just need to make sure we trigger it using use effect. So every time our chat is updated, our chatbot is automatically going to scroll down to the bottom. So now when we type in order ice cream, we flow on as per usual. How much do we want to order? 500 mils. Perfect. So that all still works. But now if we type in hello multiple times, You can see that our bot automatically scrolls to the bottom. So it gives a much nicer user experience and feel. And that about wraps up this tutorial on how to build a chatbot using React.js and Reader. Alrighty guys, and that about wraps up today's tutorial. So just to recap, we did those three key things. So we built our chatbot app using React and Redux. We connected our chatbot app to our Express backend. And last but not least, we improved our look and feel using some CSS and some dynamic scrolling. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this video, be sure to like, share and subscribe it. Until then, peace.